Well, we got pay-per-view numbers to talk about as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was going through the WrestleMania numbers, and, um, you know, it's it's um, they're ahead of last year, but um, um, I don't I couldn't give like a good percentage, but they're ahead of last year because I don't have the two week number in um, and the first week number. We didn't get all the numbers in, but they're you know, they're ahead. But the thing that um, jumped out at the page at me was the revolution number. Um, the final number is pretty much in because we're six weeks out. I don't think there's going to be any more buys coming in for that anymore. And um, it was huge. It was really, uh, it was, the TV pay-per-view numbers were up 34% from uh, World's End. So that's much higher than the original estimates. And so they did great in late buys. And my gut is, is that uh, it's probably has to do with, you know, I mean, that show was going to do well because it was the Sting retirement show. We knew that going in. We knew it would be one of the higher ones. And it will probably end up being the third highest in company history. Um, the key is, is that um, it did great late buys which would tell me two things number one it's uh you know good word of mouth on the show and the other one that was kind of you know the the idea is is that the television audience is an older audience than the streaming audience and the television audience being way up may be the fact that a lot of people and and being late is that there's probably a lot of people who really weren't aware of Sting's retirement and found out later and probably just decided after the fact that, uh, you know, um, they wanted to see it, that there were people checked out who checked in uh, for this show. And I don't expect those people to be back for uh, Sunday's show. But it will be interesting to see. I mean, this Sunday's number is really interesting because, you know, they're coming off of uh, two straight, significant hits i mean the the december show was a was a big success given the competition and given the expectations the march show was expected to do great but it probably overperformed i think i don't think most people expected to do as well as it did and this one you know you do have um i mean the attendance has been up and down i mean there have been there have always been some small small crowds tv ratings have been generally down although um you know obviously this last week was was generally good but um, we'll see about uh, tonight. I mean, a lot of people are going to look at tonight's number, um, you know, probably overreact to it, either good or bad. Uh, but the pay-per-view number is going to be interesting because it's there's nothing on the card that jumps out and tells me it's going to do great. Um, and just the fact that the matches themselves on paper, like it looks like a lot of really great wrestling matches, that's not necessarily a great lure i mean um it's it's good i mean it's just not there's never anything bad about great wrestling matches but in and of itself alone you know that's not uh that's not going to be your your difference maker so um you know it's going to be very interesting you know i mean you don't have sting you don't have you don't have mjf but uh you got i mean you got you know it's this a card that could really be like one of the best wrestling shows of the year you know and you know, super semifinal, and you got a, you know, Swerve and Samoa Joe going for the title, um, you know, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's a logical match coming off of the last pay per view where they were the semifinal and in the three way, and they, you know, Swerve was the one who didn't get pinned, so it's a logical next step, and um, you know, we'll see, could be a championship change too. Get a big article on the front page today with a lot of details about the new Marigold promotion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the um, the first show, by the way, it, uh, sold out. Although that's not, um, I guess it's always a good sign when the first show sells out immediately. You know, tickets were just put on sale. But, um, I mean, I expected that. You know, there's going to be the curiosity and everything like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, the uh, the big stuff is, is that... Um, you know, I mean, a lot of talk about Julia, a lot of talk about WWE and everything like that. And there's, um, you know, Levesque and, and uh, Rossi Ogawa did meet over WrestleMania week. And apparently there's something that's been, um, you know, worked out in the sense Julia is going to the expectation right now is that Julia is going to work for both companies. Probably the hoped for start date is the July 7th show in Toronto for her in NXT 
but then she would continue to work for um she would continue to work in japan for marigold as their top star for a little while however long i don't know and then going forward eventually she will you know move to florida um with her family and then um at that point the hope is is that that she would continue to work the four big shows or however many it is i mean the 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 battle plan for marigold is is four major shows a year in major arenas and then like monthly shows at cork and hall which would be the big shows most month and then the months where they had the you know the four big months the cork and shows would probably be the angles leading up to the big shows so um the, the idea would be that she would probably be on those big shows as much as possible and also they're going to be looking for see if they can get uh talent from wwe for those big shows although right now you know based on the press conference the talent they're looking at is is eo and um um who's the other one Kyrie, um, Kyrie saying yeah Kyrie saying and eo and eo sky so um you know just basically women that have already worked for the promotion in the past as opposed to bringing in you know like a, a becky lynch or or nia Jax or rhea ripley or whoever you know uh bailey or whoever although that could happen too you know and, and in time it probably would be valuable for uh marigold if they could bring some of those women in for the big shows it probably sp spice up the shows because the one thing that they would do is is they would have access if they did that to women that uh you know none of the other companies would have access to so it would be a feather in their cap because there's many many women promotions there and the key thing is is stardom you know which is obviously going to be their their rival whether either side likes it or not that's how it's going to work out unless they you know i mean when when at one point when they were talking you know when um rossi was going to quit and everything like that i mean stardom and rossi i mean before he got fired i mean the discussions were that in about a year or so you know after the start let's do an interpromotional angle you know it makes sense although the way that it ended the relationship ended um I'm not saying it's impossible because things like that happen in wrestling all the time you know companies get at odds then they make up but it's less likely in the short run than it probably would have been had the had the relationship ended a lot smoother so uh that's kind of where that stands right now it's update on eric redbeard i mean just the uh, the deal that uh you know he's done with his indies and the belief is he's going to WWE, you know, with, with in the in the uh, Bo Dallas stable. But that's just speculation. I mean, I don't know that as a fact or anything like that. Matt Cardona suffered a torn pec. Yeah. And is going to be out of action for quite some time. He was scheduled for WXW at the uh, Drive of Champions show June 1st and uh, they announced that he was uh, not going to be there due to the injury, undergoing surgery, and uh, yeah, best best wishes to him. Coming off He's that match with uh, Adam Copeland, which everybody went nuts about. Yeah, he confirmed the surgery and everything like that, and basically said it wasn't the best time for an injury. Although no time is. I was going to say no, there's no good time for an injury. No good time for an injury. But he had a lot of momentum right now. You know, I mean, he can get it back, but. Uh, yeah, torn pec. You know, it's uh, he, he tore his bicep recently too. You know, and remember? That's just right. Yeah. Yeah, he's just coming off that. I mean, so he's had a lot of uh, man, it's a lot of a lot of issues. See the Vince the Vince Thor story on NBC News? It was ridiculous. Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. I guess the thing that he's was like just, he's not worried about nothing. He's just traveling and buying cats for people. Is he Teddy Hart now? He's going. He's know. going to another country and bringing cats back. Uh, that's, that was quite the quite the interesting thing. What? You know, just uh, worrying about the uh, the uh, the lawsuit. You know, he's got good lawyers. You know, he always does. Got good lawyers. You know, I mean, the one thing is, is that like no, it said, he wasn't worrying about it. He's worried about it. Well, of course, know. but the article's claiming like, hey, he's not worried about anything. Well, I mean, I mean, he's at the going end of out to dinner and traveling gosh. and. Well, I'm sure he's going out to Getting dinner. Getting cats. I'm sure he's going out to dinner. Just because you're worried about a lawsuit doesn't mean you're going to, like, not eat. You're not going to go to restaurants. Well, I'm well aware of that. I'm telling you what this ridiculous article said. Yeah. He's moved on. He just moved on. 
I, 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 I don't know. You know the one that, 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 that where they said in that article that he has no contact with anyone in WWE, and then it says he has contact with Rock, which is kind of um, kind of contradictory right there. Um, it's very difficult, you know. Well, I mean, they, they, they claimed he never talks business with Stephanie and Paul, which if he's talking with them, I find it absolutely impossible that he's not talking business. Like, impossible. Um, and the idea that there's nobody he's talking business with, I mean, that's a great story, but it's, he's got, he, you know, he, he's going to talk business, you know? I mean, it's just, that's, the, that's, that's just ridiculous to, to believe that. But, um, you know, I mean, as far as no hints on what's, what he's going to do, um, I mean, I do believe that the lawsuit's going to be settled. You know, I mean, it's... Well, it says here that uh, people close to McMahon say he's been cooperating with authorities regarding the federal criminal investigation and well, allegations of sex trafficking. Well, he believes he will been... not be charged criminally regarding the matter and that a mm-hmm. settlement will be reached in the Janelle Grant lawsuit. Well, the odds are, you know, I mean, you know, whether he's charged or not, we'll find out. I have no... Idea. Grant's attorney says there have been no settlement talks. Well, of course they're not going to have settlement talks now. I mean, from the grant side, you wouldn't. Why would you have settlement talks now? I mean, the idea is is that you want to gather as much negative information to have the most leverage possible to go against them. They're still gathering information. They're not going to settle now. I mean, but there's going to come a time. And the other thing too is 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 even, you know, I mean, you know, I'm not saying for sure they'll, they'll settle, but of course they're going to settle. You know, I mean, these cases are always settled. Just a question. It's at the end of the day, it's a question for how of how much, and you know the grant side is trying to get as much leverage as possible to get the biggest award. I don't think that they would want to go to trial because once you go to trial, you risk getting nothing. Um, in a settlement, you know you can get you know you you're probably going to get a significant amount of money. So you know, and it may go down to the wire like the Oliver Luck lawsuit where you know they were all you know we're not going to settle we're not going to settle and then like what was it a week or two right before the the trial it was like all of a sudden they settled you know because uh number one one side is like you don't want to risk coming back with nothing and the other side doesn't want to risk um a jury that thinks you're so full of shit and you're a heinous person and awards you a ridiculous amount of money so in the end of the day you know they are going to settle and it's not going to go, you know, especially this one. Um, but it, Vince's um, Vince's response is going to be coming at some point relatively soon. And Laurinaitis and WWE, which are three different responses. They're all going to have to come within the next, you know, whatever it is, short period of time. So that's probably the next. I think it was mid-May. Yeah. So that will probably be the next um, bit of news coming out of that will be uh, Vince answering the different charges which will be very interesting, um, you know, trying to basically say that uh, these allegations are are lies, and then where Laurinaitis does does Laurinaitis um, in his response does he uh, contradict Vince or does he turn? You know, I mean, everything that has been said by Laurinaitis' attorney seems to indicate that the stories are true, but he's trying to extricate him from it by saying that, you know, Vince forced him too. And then you've got the company side, and you got to remember that she is suing the company too. She's not just suing Vince and Laurinaitis individually. So the company's response will also be very interesting. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.